Halloween has a special place in our hearts here at The Story Girls. Kelsey and Becky actually started their channel way back in 2010 by posting a Halloween costume tutorial. And they've done a ton of other costume ideas since then that you should definitely check out if you're looking for some inspiration. The Story Girls host an epic annual Halloween party for creators and friends right here in the studio. I mean, we have one last year and we're planning this year, so I can call that annual, right? It can be really easy to forget all about budget and sustainability when you're decorating for the seasons, for holidays, for big events. But we want to try to see if we can do as much as we can with decor and supplies that we already have on hand, you know, getting some secondhand items and things that we can get for cheap or even free. Free would be amazing. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, okay. Because we want to keep the decor minimal. We actually wanted to do one big statement piece right as you walk in the door that screams Halloween, not literally, but that would be cool. We're gonna do a classic witch's cauldron. So I saw a few TikToks and YouTube videos that were doing similar things. To start, we needed a bucket. I got this bucket off of Facebook Marketplace. This bad boy was only $10, so I think we're off to a great start. So to bulk out the sides of this to make this bucket look like an actual cauldron, I actually cut a bunch of these out of cardboard yesterday. Now, my mom and I just bought one of those modular sofas online that gets shipped to you in a bunch of different boxes. So we had cardboard to spare. Came in real clutch for this project. So yeah, we got 48 of these. We are just going to hot glue them to the side of a bucket. I've seen a lot of different cauldron DIY videos as inspiration, and this is my Frankenstein version that will hopefully be the easiest, most affordable method and make the best use out of existing and secondhand materials. Okay, that is looking sick. It already looks so much more like a cauldron than I think I was even hoping for. But something that's actually gonna give this even more of that cauldron shape is the addition of a pool noodle around the rim. Something I didn't see in the videos I was watching but I think I wanna do is add some sort of structure between the flaps just so that when they're pressing on each other they've got some support that isn't just the hot glue. So I got this box of flyers. Look at that. I went to the grocery store on the day that these flyers were expiring and because they had like a whole stack of them left and they obviously weren't gonna be able to distribute them by the end of the day, they were more than happy for me to take them off their hands. Oh my God, it's like those TikToks. Like... Bentley. <laughs> it's time to lay down a base layer that our paper mache will sit on. I'm gonna tape some flyers down across and see how that goes. And if all goes well, pretty soon, we paper mache. Yes! Okay, so I've cut all of our long strips of paper. They are roughly about two inches wide. So that's good to go, but what are we gonna use to stick them on? It has been so long since I did paper mache as a kid, so I wanted to test the tried and true old school methods of my youth, flour and water and glue and water. But what actually turned out to be a sleeper hit for me was the wallpaper paste. I had a feeling as it was going on that it might be the one, so I added a couple extra layers of paper to the top and it is rock hard. And we have so much wallpaper adhesive. When we bought that product, we actually had to order a whole case and I don't know if we'll ever get through all of that adhesive, but I'm gonna try to use up as much as I can on this project. I'm gonna do 56 grams of the wallpaper adhesive to 10 cups of water. Freaking cool. I can't lie, but there is so much adhesive on here. It is so wet. It is gonna take a while to dry. So while it's drying, why don't we go work on some of the other projects around the office?
Okay, so we already have a lot of smart lights here in the studio and we did change them to spooky colors like purple, green, and orange for the party last year. But some of these bulbs are actually just regular LEDs. Hey, go please turn the vanity lights to purple. Got it, changing two lights to purple. These ones here, we actually really like the look of the globe, but for the party, that's kind of not the vibe. So we're actually just gonna change out these four bulbs for smart light bulbs, which are capable of changing colors. So while we're changing out the vanity bulbs temporarily, I'm gonna change out these kitchen bulbs permanently. Cause sometimes we like a cooler white for filming, but a warmer white for ambiance. So it'll be nice to have the option. Last year, Becky found some frames and some flowers that she spray painted matte black the day of the party. What a rock star. So I did find this frame that we had on the shelf, but it is silver. And some more leftover flowers from last year's wedding DIY. I think I wanna spray paint both of these black, add it to the other ones, and then we'll style. So speaking of last year's party, Becky also brought in a giant disco ball that she had at home. Unfortunately, she's actually got that installed in her new home now, so it's not really an option. However, we do have a few smaller disco balls that kind of just live here in the office, and I had this thought. So I actually bought this mirror ball motor online that is supposed to turn at three RPM, which I'm assuming is rotations per minute. So I thought that maybe I could make some sort of like multi mirror ball pendant situation and maybe hang it off of this wooden X that I made out of some scrap wood that was here at the office. I'm thinking we just hang some balls off of some fishing line at different heights and then we suspend it from that motor up above the DJ booth, shine a spotlight on it, and as it turns, we get a little sparkly action. That's the hope, that's the plan. So let's see if we can make that happen. Start. I guess maybe with the biggest one. I don't actually think I want this in the middle. I don't know. I think we gotta play around with it a little bit. You know what? Let's do two. Nothing like a disco ball falling on your head at a TSG Halloween party. Basically, I just needed to hang the balls um, from fishing line at different heights and just balance them on the X where they would sort of naturally balance each other out. Where they found that natural balance is where I pop in the eye hook and then I slip in the fishing line and I mean, come on. You see that, it's disco flying already. And it's just gonna turn, turn, turn. When I told the person on the phone, that's a DJ company, they're all female owned. Ooh. And she was like, girl, I'm all about the vibes. Do you have a disco that can shine some lights on? I was like, we, do we have a disco ball? Girl, we're making a whole disco display. <laughs> and she's like, I love it. I absolutely love it. Vibes, vibes, vibes. All the vibes. I am just gonna go ahead and paint the supports for the disco ball black so that it blends a little bit more with the ceiling and you don't see them quite as much. And all you see is disco. Okay, so since we're gonna paint this cauldron, I think I'm gonna leave it to dry overnight, but um, I did wanna make use of these rope handles that were already on the bucket, because you know how normally like on the witch's cauldron it has like a handle of some description. I did not paper mache these, but I think probably if I just cover them, wrap them in a little bit of masking tape, that'll be enough to paint them black with the rest of the cauldron and reusing every part of the bucket. We'll come back tomorrow, we'll get to painting this, 
We'll finish off all these DIYs, and then we're gonna see this place set up with Halloween vibes. Good morning, we're back. This has dried. She's hard. So I do have a gallon of a really deep charcoal gray, which I think is gonna be an okay base layer for this, and maybe we'll add some black accents, maybe some rust accents, I don't know. But first things first, we are gonna throw a layer of almost black on this cauldron. It's my very favorite way to shake a gallon of paint. Just make sure you keep your hand on the lid. Okay. using a combination of an industrial adhesive, in this case E6000, with some hot glue to hold it while it dries. So I'm actually just gonna go in with a little bit of a rusty color and some black, just to add some detail, some dimension to the cauldron. Okay, this is looking so much more like an old rusty cauldron. I'm super happy with that. On its own, it would look fantastic. It would make all the statement we need for this party. However, we gotta be extra. Of course we do. So we want to have a misting, bubbling effect of a bubbling cauldron with a potion in there. You know what I'm talking about. The first thought I had was to use a fog machine. They're pretty easy to rent for one-time use and not that expensive, actually. It runs off of a fog-making liquid. Now, there are some options that are water-based and non-toxic, but from what I read, people were saying that those produce less dense, more wispy-looking fog, and we want something with a big impact. So another option I considered was dry ice which has an advantage over the fog machine in that it doesn't require electricity. So we could just pop a chunk of ice in the bucket and we wouldn't have to have any cords sticking out. It's also something that wouldn't leave us with a lot of waste or something to store at the end of it. Once it's used up, that's it, it's gone. Another pro for the dry ice is that it bubbles and fogs. So not only do you get that smoky effect, but it actually makes the water bubble, which is super cool. However, there are some disadvantages to dry ice. The dry ice would have a limited duration, depending on how much you actually put in the bucket. And you would probably need to replenish throughout the night. From what I heard, it works best with hot water, so we wouldn't wanna be dumping out hot water and putting in fresh hot water all throughout the party. And it can be dangerous. You have to make sure that you're wearing the proper hand protection when handling the dry ice. You could very easily get frostbite from it. I also thought about using um, a humidifier or a vaporizer or like an essential oil diffuser. These are also readily available. I've got a diffuser, Kelsey's got a diffuser, there's one at the office. We've got diffusers. They also only require water to function. No need to purchase a separate product or use chemicals that we're not sure about. I did a test of a vaporizer and a humidifier that I have at home and the diffuser as well. And I have to say, the mist produced by them was pretty underwhelming. I don't think anybody would be impressed. So what I did decide to go with was a pond fogger. This is something that I was easily able to purchase online and was relatively inexpensive. And the pond fogger only uses water to operate, which is great. No chemicals to purchase or be wary of. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready. Plug it in. We got bubbling, we got mist. And I have three of them, so how sick is that gonna look? It seems reasonably safe to use, and it should take quite a while before we need to replenish the water in the cauldron. As it's turning the water into mist, it's bubbling and it's kind of spitting out over the edge of the cauldron. Can you see this mess? We gotta do something about that. I think I'm gonna do a coat of polyurethane all over the cauldron, just to help protect it against the water overspray. Originally, I was gonna prop up my pot of water on a few paint cans, but it was looking a little bit low inside the cauldron, so I switched it out for a bucket, and I think that's gonna work a little bit better. Since I don't want a bunch of electrical cords coming up and out of the cauldron, 
I'm gonna try and plug all three pond foggers into this battery converter and hope that it runs them for a decent amount of time. Thank you so much for watching. I had such a good time DIYing this cauldron, playing around with disco balls, and doing everything else to get this studio party ready. Speaking of party ready, you should definitely check out this video that Kelsey did last year where she put together so many Halloween costume ideas using items from her closet. Definite last minute Halloween costume inspiration. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.